and save. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 434. Each week yeah, we meet here to uh, consider the questions asked and answered on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Up with us tonight we have Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim is uh, 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 probably uh, the, the most interesting SEO that I know. Um, he's based in uh, Corby, um, about 100 miles north of London, uh, but he works all over the world. Um, Masataki Wasa is based in Wimbledon, not too far from Tim, about 100 miles south of Tim. And um, Masataki's website is wasaweb.net, W-S-A-S-A web.net and Tim's is onlineownership.com. All right, we've got seven questions tonight. Um, let's have a look at the first one. Um, it's from Sadat Rayid Odawa. Um, he said 90% of backlinks are coming from unrelated web directory submissions. Uh, so that said, hey, uh, SEO, I recently analysed the backlink backlink profile of my competitor and realized that 90% of his backlinks are coming from unrelated web directory submissions. My competitor is getting decent traffic with such backlinks. Should I use the same tactic to build backlinks? Aren't such backlinks spammy and could turn into a Google penalty? Yeah, I don't think those are really going to be uh, an issue. Um, I mean, if they're from directories, um, even, even, yeah, I don't think they're going to be an issue. Um, um, I don't think you need to build them. If you are a location-based business okay um directory submissions uh will help uh in google understanding your location and what you do uh, but you don't need to go and build all the crap ones out you know just uh you know there's normally a handful um like in the us depends where you are so in the us there's normally i think about 50 you know decent ones to submit to in the uk we've probably got about i don't know 15 20. most of them you can actually handle by just submitting to the aggregators that actually aggregate out to these um but you know if they've gone and got these really cheap crappy like single page thing which is just on some bizarre directory um i don't think that kind of stuff's going to be really helping um and i think you're also um i think you're also looking at too much into just you know these kind of directory links and thinking well this is how my competitors ranking you, you're not looking at the full sort of picture um you're just assuming that these crappy things which whatever tool you used actually picked up um is is like do you know what i mean so and if they're really crappy and you say you know you, you suspect that they're spammy and i think another one you're talking about nine times out of ten um google ignores those anyway um they 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 yeah so look, no, I don't think you need to go down that road. But if you are a local business with an address or in a fixed location, then it is certainly worth your while just looking at some of the, the um, you know, the top 10, top 20, whichever country you specifically are in and just building out some citations. But as to submitting to, you know, you get these, you see these crap things all the time, submit to, 900 web directories no nah, you, do, you don't need to go down that road and equally i don't think that is what is um pushing your competitor 
yeah, I mean, there are two questions, aren't there? One, is the traffic coming from these sources useful? Does it convert? If it's really unrelated, it's unlikely, right? So is it worth it? That's you know, one question. Second question, you know, which Tim answered is, will it help in ranking? And as is probably no. So I think what he has to ask himself is, is it, you know, what, why would you want to go down that route and what goals are you setting by doing so? And is it, you know, is really going down this route achieve that goal? And uh, the answer is probably, you know, probably not going to do anything. In an unlikely scenario, it may harm the site, unlikely. Um, it may increase traffic, but then is it the kind of traffic you want? Thank you, Mr. Patton, and thank you, Tim. Okay, and I'd also uh, point your attention to uh, um, these can be seen on uh, the Demacia Questions Facebook group, but there are some answers given by uh, uh, Michael Martinez and uh, Christine Hansen. Okay, let's move on to number two on our run list. It's also from uh, Michael Martinez. Uh, it's um, titled the, the best recommendations for local uh, SEO. You should have been asked to compile a list of the 10 best recommendations for local SEO, specifically Google. Uh, he said, I haven't had the time to research this as I hope. Um, I don't work in this space, so this is a learning opportunity for me, but uh, making time for that has been challenging. Is there a current well-regarded resource I can recommend? Please don't point me to your own blogs. I know that there are many people that, um, working uh, in this space uh, if you just want to share tips in the comments that will be fine thank you if it helps here is the scenario a large multinational company uh, fortune 1000 with offices around the world i don't believe there are any retail locations the headquarters is in the united states i'm not sure what the goal is other than to have current information in the knowledge box Google displays around uh, branded uh, search queries. So I think in something like this, where it's, uh, you know, a, a fortune, whatever, fortune 100 company, it's not necessarily that they need to rank locally. Okay. They probably already do. Um, the thing in this scenario would most likely to be providing um, information when a user searches XYZ company and obviously it's going to return results, more relevant results based upon their location or if they're on mobile, their, their geo coordinates, et cetera, et cetera. So in that, if so, if, therefore in that instance, um, it would just be, you know, in terms of, structure so and a lot of these places don't tend to put their offices into any form of structure sometimes they don't do it sometimes they do sometimes it's horrendous they just have one page for contact us and they literally list like i don't know 50 different offices in the same country so in that instance so what's the aim here so the aim is to obviously have individual uh, uh entities or what they call like the brand the brand pack which is your three pack when somebody searches for a particular name, like for example, you can see it if you just where you are now, if you just search Starbucks, it'll show you the, you know, the three, three, three to four closest sort of Starbucks to you and it's branded. So it'll be A, B, C, and D. Um, and, and, and that would be the aim here. So each of these locations get a, they, they can get their own GMB uh, page 
And of course, um, they probably don't do social or stuff like that. But if they did, you can also use Google Posts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But let's cancel. So they have a they, they they're all they're all able to have a GMB page. Um, now, ideally, you want to put them into our locations or find a X Y whatever the brand's name is. Find find X Y Z or our locations, and uh, uh, you know, you, ideally, you want to split this all out so it's easy to understand for um, you know uh, uh, a robot that it's um, you might want to split them up by states, so it'll be um locations co and then whatever city right and then you can have them in there but essentially so nice and easy to understand where they are uh, they each have their own little landing page now remember you've got the site so people can actually it's within the site so they can go and see whether it's financial services or accounting services or whatever the heck they're looking for whatever this company does and at least they have their own location landing page um where where it's located opening hours um you know telephone numbers you may even have individual contacts specifically for those because i mean a lot of these companies would have their own individual contact accounts so the account manager is you know this is for the accounts this is for uh, customer service for that particular region this is it, it, you see what i mean so it makes sense also to have those listed uh, on that particular location page and within that, you can also include your GMB, and that's the page that your GMB should be linked to. And by doing that, you're going to be creating, so if somebody searches XYZ, whatever location, they get a list of the three offices uh, in that city or in that state, uh, and then they can narrow it down, whichever particular one. They can click through to the landing page. They can see exactly who they're looking for, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's easy to use. And, and, and so in that sense, it's not that you want to appear, but it's just structuring it better for a user to be able to find um, something within a, in a very large uh, corporation uh, to find the information or the location that they want to get hold of. Thank you, Tim. Okay, I, I think that uh, that covers it um, pretty pretty well. Thank you, mate. Um, let's have a look at number three on our run list. It's from Juan Delasay Jr. Um, he said, "Is it better to keep all the content on one site?" He said, "Assuming a gadget log has four categories: mobile, laptops, apps, and appliances. Each has two hundred and fifty pages for a total of." One one thousand pages and growing. Is it better to keep all the content on one site or split it into four sites um, with different TLDs, one for each category? Won't the latter be better um, if um, as more content is added? I don't think uh, that would well, be good. Think. As long as it's navigable, it doesn't matter how much content you add. You know, as long as it's navigable and that you, um, with either using search queries or, or, or categories or, you know, tags, uh, can actually get the user to the specific thing they're looking for. However, um, those are all very, I know you say gadget blogs, but those are all very quite unique. Like appliances may confuse the, the thing I don't know. Um, <sighs> yeah, I, um... you know what I mean. I, I, it doesn't matter about the amount of content as long as it is surfaceable to a user that they can find it. And equally, if a user can find it, then search, uh, a search engine can find it and easily go through and understand what's sitting where, why, you know, etc. cetera. Um, but when you just say appliances, to me, that's slightly off. Like mobiles, laptops, apps, that kind of would sit together. But appliances, you know, when I say appliances, I think irons, tumble dryers, 
dishwashers now if i'm if you've if i'm totally off the cuff there but that's what we typically call them in the uk uh, to me that sort of doesn't sit within the the the, 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 the framework of the site um and i would probably separate that one but you know regardless of that just because there's a lot of content it doesn't mean i mean it just, just think about like amazon you know they, they have a you know a crazy amount um but they don't have you know uh, you know they don't have to split it up as long as it's navigable and people can find it um then i you know it's it's not a problem with that with the amount of content yeah um one thing that has struck me is that um it's a blog not a website um, you know, it might just be these sort of semantics, but um, I mean, if it, if, it, if it were a site, I would say just say concentrate on one site, you know, make sure that it's as you know, all the points are timber raised. If it's a blog, you know, with sort of new articles being published in and then shown at top kind of thing, uh, then I might be tempted to split it into four, but obviously make sure that you um so that the these are sort of sister blogs if you like you know so you know if you you know, you know if you follow my mobile blog you might be also interested in a laptop blog if you're looking for a laptop that kind of thing um so it really depends on the exact situation i think i mean if it's a website general information website um then i definitely say stick with one site but if it's a blog um, and the sort of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm imagining a sort of very much a simple blog, um, you know, not using blogging platform as a website, but really like a blog, then I'm tempted to split it into four. Yeah, that's true. All right. Let's move on now to number uh, four on our run list. This one is from Rudolf Leidehensky. I hope I've pronounced that correctly, Rudolf. Um, he said that uh, the question is titled uh, CD, uh, Content Delivery Networks, um, Treated as External Sites. Um, he said, hi, all the site is using a, a content delivery network for images, and this means URLs are external. How do search engines know that these files are CDN and are not external resources? Well, strictly speaking, they are external sources in that if they're on CDN's domain, right? Well, they're not on, not on the, the, the same, uh, like they're not on the website's domain. Yeah. So in that sense, you know, they are external. Um, so the, it's really about, um, about the question, isn't it? You know, what is Rudolf worried about? And if you scroll down, um, it talks about, um, you know, external links sucking SEO juices from your site, um, which I think is a misplaced anxiety. And I mean, a lot of sites post their images on external sites. And if people are looking for images on Google image search, for example, um, you know, it, it will associate that image with a web page and that web page might be on, on your domain. And that's quite normal. I don't, I'm not so sure um, it would make a huge difference in image search if you have both on the same domain. I think it may help to establish the ownership relationship. But generally speaking, I don't think this is an issue.
Okay. Right. Um, let's move on to number five. Um, this one is titled, I've read that redirects should be kept for one year. It's from Kristen L. Stray, and uh, she went on to say, after a website redesign, all the old re-URLs um, should be redirected. Once this has been um, redirected for six months or so, um, should I also remove them with the removal tool in the search console? or just leave them with the redirect for another six months or so. I've read that redirects should be kept for one year. Uh, you'll... Uh, so when you've, when you've, obviously with a redesign, yeah, sure. If you've changed your, you, you know, the URLs, um, you know, ideally you want to keep them exact. It makes life easier and you don't need to mess about with redirects. Um, but of course, um, yeah, so you redirect all your old pages. Um, now, this thing about how having to keep them for a year or something like that, um, that's going to be on sort of a page by page basis. You may have a it may have an old page which was really popular. It had a lot of links. Um, it generated a lot of its own traffic, etc., uh, etc. Et now, something like that um, may have been externally linked or referenced a lot of times. Now, um, if that is still bringing in uh, traffic, you definitely don't want to be ditching that redirect. The other ones, like, I don't know, the Contact Us page or the, the you know, those those kind of little pages and stuff. Um, yeah, sure. You know, over time, once everything's settled down, um, you can you can certainly start dropping those. But um, something that's been popular, um, it's been linked up, you know, and if you don't have the time to actually track down and say, hey, you know, to to whatever the resources are link, you know, updating them, going, um, hi, we've updated our site, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, we're just letting you know in case you want to update the actual URL that you're linking to. And thanks again for linking to us and linking to our guide or our reference or whatever. Um, without you doing that, you know, ideally that redirect should stay in place. Um, you know, and to, uh, for as long as the other references out there are actually um, driving uh, traffic uh, or users or whatever to you. Uh, because if you remove that redirect after a year or two years, um, that's it, you know. Um, in theory, the new page should be appearing now and people can then just quickly search it and they'll find the new one. But, um, you know, ideally, yeah, so... I don't think I think each one needs to be treated and, and don't just pop it into some kind of six month, one year sort of rule. Yeah, I think the cost involved in uh, maintaining the redirect um, should be minimal. Um, and so I would just leave them as they are. I mean, in a sense, I can't see the reason for removing them. And you know, if it's simple matter of just leaving them and let them be, just let them be, and keep the redirect in place. You know, once you've set up the redirect, which can be a tricky process, um, you know, I don't see any advantages in removing them. But by removing them, uh, you may encounter situations that Tim mentioned. So just avoid that. Um, keep the redirect in place. Okay, any more? All right, let's move to number six on our run list. Um, Sadat Raid Odua asks, is it good to build backlinks to the homepage? 
Hey community, regarding backlinks, is it good to build backlinks to the home page or should it be the pages I want to rank? How many backlinks should I get per day so that it looks natural in the eyes of Google? Um, so, yeah, you're like, oh my Jesus, wept. <laughs> How many backlinks should I get per day so that it looks natural in the eyes of Google? everything that you've said about building backlinks right the minute you say building backlinks or getting backlinks none of those will ever look natural to google ever yeah i mean <laughs> the question as it is phrased it means that that, that um, um they want to um <laughs> Um, get links and naturally and try to disguise it as natural links so um, the intent I think tells something and that's an issue thanks Massa um, yeah, I, you know, I feel like I've, I've got to say something here it, it, and that is that, um, um, so that um, you, you should um, consider that um, a, a Google calls it page rank. It's, it's not um, site rank, it, it's page rank. So um, it, it, sending something, um, um, you know, Per, per day, um, it's, it would be um, random, totally random. Um, and if, if, you know, the, the, the laying down, like the, the connection of, of, of pages is chaotic, well, that's as close as um, Google would know to it being natural. Anyway. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, just to add on that, I think what's important to remember is the bigger picture and what your site does. What what do you want to do with your site? Where do you want your visitors to land? How are they going to navigate your site? You know, think all these questions instead of, you know, Ooh, I have to get X number of links over, you know, Y period of time and that will look natural, etc. Et so don't, and, you know, don't be so um narrowly focused on links you know, try to see the bigger picture thanks Mr. Taki. and thank you tim all right let's go to number seven on our run list um the last one for the night juan delise jr asks a question titled it's can cons can constantly updating the public Publish date, increase search rank. No, 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 no. Um, or in the sitemap to make the page appear fresh. It's hard enough to get um, Googlebot to, to, to look at a sitemap. Um, anyway, um, Brenda Malone, I, I think, it gave the best answer. Um, yeah. and you can see it on the screen there. She just simply said no. Yeah. And and you are trying to fool people, right? You have an old content. You just want to plaster a new published date and hopefully that gets picked up. I mean, what's the point of that? What What's the benefit for the visitor? You're just trying to fool the search engines and your visitors. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean... It doesn't work and I don't think it's a good practice ethically. Now, what you can do, obviously, if you do update a page is to add the modified date. We can do that, um, you know, last update timestamp. You can do that. that. That's totally legitimate. But if you are just if you just have content on which you are sticking newer and newer date without actually changing the content, I mean, that's 
I mean, that's not the done thing. Yeah, it, it, it's really not, not good. And as Travis Bailey uh, uh, pointed out um, on the uh, the Facebook group, uh, the page would have been cached by uh, the search engine, um, and most search engines could um, um, could see very clearly that the uh, the only thing that's changed is the. Uh, um, the, the, the time tag. Anyway, let's move on. And it's thank you for watching time. Do we have any more general business, uh, Mr. Taki? Mm, no, I didn't think so. And I see Tim is on the phone there. Well, we'll be back next week um, to, to do this um, all again. Um, uh, in, in, in the meantime, I, I can't go without thanking the, the, the people uh, who um, devote so much time and attention to uh, our Facebook group and provide answers on a, in a timely manner, uh, making uh, dumb SEO questions such a, a valuable uh, resource. So we, we thank you very much. People like um, Stockbridge Trustlow, Michael Martinez, Brenda Hansen, and so many others, I, I, sh I shouldn't, uh, I, I must make a list so that I, I can stop ignoring people. Um, and especially, I must thank uh, you, uh, Mr. Taki, and uh, uh, our Tim, Tim's off the phone. Um, and uh, so I must thank Tim and uh, hope to see you back again uh, next week. I was just looking at um, um, some of our early recordings, Tim. Um, you've been here since day one, more or less. Anyway, uh, okay, if I can figure out the right button to press, I can turn this off. Hang on, let's go.